Suffers and Vaughan's Cricket Show. New faces for England, but no problem as they thrashed Pakistan in Cardiff by nine wickets in the first ODI. Couldn't have gone much better, could it, Tuffers, really? Uh, what a fantastic performance. Five debutants, I think, and a team that not a lot of people would really recognise. It just goes to show the strength and depth England have in white ball cricket at the moment. Great performance. Yeah, um, absolutely. And Michael, plenty of food for thought for the selectors going forward after that as well. Yeah, you want a, a bigger a pool of players as you possibly can. Um, real positive, Mahmood being the standout man of the match, but David Benlan, we might talk about him getting a test place on the back of how he played today. I think he may be getting a call-up. We will also discuss James Anderson's enduring brilliance, Hashim Amla's brilliant endurance, and look ahead to the women's T20s between England and India. Tuffers and Vaughan's Cricket Show on Five Live. Yes, and you can hear live coverage of that women's first T20 match between England and India tomorrow on Five Live Sports Extra. That's at 6.15. We are bringing you so much live sport at the moment on Five Live, as you were just hearing with Steve Crossman. We had the women's semi-finals at Wimbledon today. We'll bring you the men's semis tomorrow. Of course, this weekend, it's the finals from SW19 and we'll have live commentary, of course, of the final of Euro 2020 between mm. England and Italy. I know, I know <laughs> that we were all in our different ways following the game last night and you tweeted the this morning, Michael, is anyone not hungover? Well, surely. <laughs> what, 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 Ellie, you must have been a little bit frosty this morning after last night. I know Phil definitely was. I, I was, was a bit dusty. I was yeah. a bit dusty. And you're in the final, Ellie, of the sweep as well, aren't you? I am in the final of the sweep. Yes, it's it's me up against Alex Hartley in the final of the oh, sweep. That's the, the Test yeah. Match Special sweepstake. Um, and yeah, I'm England. Come on. Yes. She's Italy. So, uh, so we will see. So I can't, I can't. I can't lose, so I'll get something from getting to the final at least. But I don't want I don't want to kind of, you know, you talk about omens, you talk about things that have happened before. And just as we were going through all the things that are happening on Sunday, what was happening on men's final day at Wimbledon? So the last time there was a men's finals day at Wimbledon, two years ago exactly on that day. Ooh, what was happening? We were at World Cup final. We were at, at Lords. Lords. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I, I'll oh, be yes, honest with right. you, I was so engrossed in the cricket. Um, it was about a day after, I think it was on the Monday, that someone said, oh, you do realise there's a very long Wimbledon men's final. Yes, I said, <laughs> didn't have a clue. <laughs> yeah. I tell you exactly no what, it, it, it finished halfway through the Super over, because I, 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 <laughs> I was doing all the updates on the Wimbledon coverage. So halfway through the Super over, it kind of finished finished with uh, Wimbledon, went over to Aggers for, for the final stages of the Super over. So, so tough as is, is it, is it? Is it going to come home in the same way as it did for Owen Morgan's men? Any well, surprises? I hope so. Listen, we can only keep our fingers crossed. We've managed to navigate our way there so far, haven't we? We've, we've played all right. I still think we've got a little bit up our sleeve. During that World Cup final as well, wasn't Lewis Hamilton winning the... the um, the British the, Grand Prix. The yeah. as well. yes. It was yeah. amazing. That's, day, that's not this weekend. I think that's next weekend. No, I think that's I'm right. right in saying so. Yeah. So, yeah. I think but we'll I mean, be in for drama. It, it, it's mm. all been far too calm so far, Ellie. You know, this, yeah. this, this the whole year, the, the team have been so good. And, you know, I guess because of the era that we've watched football, we're always expecting the worst. It's kind of in the back of our mind that surely yeah. someone's going to get sent off or something's not going to go the way of the England football team. It always seems to be that we, we have a little bit of bad fortune, but I don't know. It just all seems very calm. It, it, it's far too calm for my liking. I like a little bit of mayhem when I start watching my football, but uh, they're too good. They look at a team that's very united, very, very likeable as well. They seem a, a, a really good set of guys that are playing the game properly. And I, I didn't actually see Harry, Harry Kane um, score the rebound because um, I was on the floor thumping the ground as he <laughs> saved it. And then all of a sudden, everyone was jumping on top of me back. <laughs> well, I think, I think this, is why, this is my excuse for having a little bit of a hangover this morning is because, the, you know, the kind of the other big events recently that, that I've been part of with, with you guys as well. So, you know, so the World Cup final at Lords, uh, the, the Headingley, that, that amazing final day. Oh. You know, because we were working, we couldn't have a drink. So I just, I was kind of kept nervous, nervously topping, nervously topping the glass up. Half a lager and shandy, half a lager. Yeah, shandy. that's 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 my normal. That's just to my start normal with, limit. Tough as you know. Start, isn't it? <laughs> start with the shandy and just—it's like an innings. 
you know, you've got to get yeah. in, haven't you? When you when you've you got start to go through the gears, bit. Mike. You've got to start with a shandy, and then you you know you see off that new ball, and then you go into a full full fully flame. You end up you know slogging and smashing it to all parts with a few shots. That's the way to Listen, do it. I was launching it over cow corner before they'd even got in the first ten minutes. Anyway, uh, enough of that. We're all fine now, and we're really excited. Of course, we're really excited about Sunday. But let's talk about. We're here. It's a cricket show. Let's talk about the cricket, yes. shall we? Because England beat Pakistan by nine wickets to win the first ODI at Cardiff, uh, with the side including five debutants. Um, and this was an entirely new squad that was named earlier this week following a COVID outbreak. Among uh, the, the group, at Saqib Mahmood took four for 42. Pakistan bowled out for 141. In reply, David Milan scored 68 off 69 balls. Zach Crawley added an unbeaten 58. England take a 1-0 lead in the three-match series with the second ODI taking place at Lords on Saturday. Tough as they, England got those runs with still more than half the overs remaining. It was available to them. absolutely sublime. I wouldn't have fancied giving out the caps, the uh, the debutants caps this morning. You would have, you'd have had to have a long a long speech to give them all, wouldn't you? I mean, yeah, funny old topsy turvy sort of world that we're living in. Um, a, a really fresh side. Uh, um, I think I think perhaps Pakistan were a little bit undercooked. You know, first game of their their sort of series and their tournament over here. Um, but I was just so impressed. Really liked the way Zach Crawley played as well. Looked to put bat to ball. Looked strong. Looked to get on top of the bounce and dominate. And I, and I just keep getting more and more impressed by David Milan. He, he's, he's like he's like a David Gower. I mean, he was his timing was sublime. His his, his shots through extra cover, the drives, the pulls, late cuts. Um, I just think he gets better and better and better. I mean, he's number one in the T20 Thimmy Bobs, but as Mike was saying earlier on, I think it is odds on that he gets um, a, a call up for the test matches. He's got to. He just looked a million dollars today. And, and he does every time I see him. And they keep saying in one day cricket that, you know, he's, he's like the glue and everything. And then you look down at his score and he scored 50 off of 38 balls or something. So he, he, he gets a lot. He, he gets cracking as well. His strike rate's fantastic. I, I, I um, love that. Um, seen back in that test team Mike yeah I, I like Ben Stokes at the toss and I, I don't know who was uh, doing it for TV and said any change he said yeah 11 11 from he the forgot. last game yeah, he didn't he forgot <laughs> these times are very well, he, forgot, he forgot some of the he did didn't he he, he forgot did. um so he, he forgot Zach Crawley and Lewis Gregory um he said he said we've got 11 changes from the last game we've got five debutants John Simpson Phil Sort Bryden Cars uh, and I should know this. I've just done the cat presentation. Can someone <laughs> help me out? <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think what it shows. I mean, when you think this England team just just got together yesterday, oh. and to produce that kind of performance, it tells you a lot about the white ball culture. You know, around the dressing yeah. room. Even though, you know, there's many that haven't been a part of the World Cup and, and a part of the squad for the last few years. Once you develop a culture around a team, you know, those new players that arrive in it are just expected to take it on even further. Um, you know, I'll be honest, I thought Pakistan were pathetic. That's my honest Ooh. opinion from Pakistan today. I thought they were absolutely pathetic. There's a lot of players in that Pakistan team that have played a lot of cricket here. They're not a team that's not played in English conditions. No. And I thought they put in a performance that was really worrying. Mm -hmm. You know, they just have no nothing about yeah. them, Ellie. Absolutely nothing. Yes, the mood, brilliant start. Two in the first. That, that, that's a perfect start. But they just didn't have any sense of trying to fight the way, way through. You know, with the bat in hand, I thought they were just fragile. Uh, and I'll keep using the word, it was pathetic. And then with the ball in hand, I just didn't think they ever went different. You know, Pakistan, I'm so used to seeing them. You know, they bowl quickly, they bowl incredibly good slower balls. They, they think out of the box. I just thought it was, you, you know, you, there you go. You, you can have the win. You know, you can go one the lip in the series. It's not going to give you any kind of pressure. Uh, I'll be honest, England could have picked... You know, they, they could have taken half of Gareth Southgate's squad. It's not even made the bench, and, and they'd have beaten Pakistan today. Jaden Sancho could have played to have beaten Pakistan today. They were that poor. Is there any excuse? I mean, I'll, I'll, we'll come back to England in a second, Tuffers, obviously. But mm. is there any excuse for the Pakistan squad that they haven't really had competitive games? They've been here. They've been in a bubble in Derby well, again. You know, and the, these England players have been playing for their counties until well, until the moment that they were pulled out of playing yeah. for their counties. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, the England guys, all of those guys were ready. They were game ready just to slot in. And then all it is, as Mike was saying, is about the culture. Chris Silverwood would have just had a few little words with them, got the group together and said, come on, guys, show us what your stuff. What an opportunity you've got here. A lot of those guys, would, you know, w w wouldn't even been thinking about playing for England for the next, you know, one, two, three years or if ever. So it was a fantastic opportunity for them to have a run out and impress. Um, and I think you're right. I think that Pakistan looked undercooked. Um, it is difficult in these times when you're just playing sort of like amongst the squad games, into squad games. Um, it doesn't have that edge. It doesn't make you match ready. But I mean, these are the situations that you have to deal with. And, and I do make Mike right a little bit. You know, there wasn't any sort of um, desire to occupy the crease and sort of like, OK, you lose wickets early on in that first power play and then you get stuck in and you try and get yourself a score on the board. It, it, it was a poor display from Pakistan, but knowing Pakistan, the they will bounce back. They will yeah. bounce back. Don't well, worry about that. Well, they can't play any worse. Um, they were here no. last year. <laughs> you know, they, they were here last year in a, in, in, in a more difficult bubble. Yeah. You know, so the, their great. performance levels last year were a lot better. You can have one-off days. You can have days where it just didn't go your way. It's just when I see bad thinking, you know, and, and a real, you know, it's almost like, oh, 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 we've got another day in a couple of days and we'll put it right then. They, they didn't show any willing to try and just try and fight the way out of a, a real poor start. Um, this England side are, are very good. Even, even when I, I saw all the changes, I just know the way that they play white ball cricket and the way that these players are being told the way that they have to play for the counties to try and get in the England side. So they, even though there's a few names that not many people would have recognised, all these players are playing the right style of white ball cricket. So when they are thrown in, um, you know, it doesn't surprise me that they play the right way, the, the Owen Morgan way. It's aggressive with the bat, you know, very aggressive with the ball. Uh, it, it was a pitch that offered a little bit, so it, it nibbled nicely. Uh, and the likes of Mahmood are so used to the ball just doing a little bit. Um, he, he he looks like, I mean, you mentioned at the start earlier about, you know, who could, I guess, push the way into the, the big squad when everyone's fit and ready. I know Saki has been around uh, the, the team for quite a while, but he just looks like he's a natural that could bowl in all conditions. You know, yes, he had a, a greenish tinge to the pitch today, bowl well on that, but he just looks like the kind of bowler that could bowl well on a flat wicket as well and get the ball reverse swinging, which I've seen him do for yeah. Lancashire. Uh, Matt yeah. Parkinson, I was really impressed with the leg spinner. Yeah. Yeah. You know, two wickets for him. Uh, not easy bowling in Cardiff, Phil, with those short, straight boundaries. He got oh, uh, hit over mid on a, a, from Shadab Khan once, but, you know, I, I like the way that he bowled. You know, he wasn't scared of giving it a bit of flight. Perfect to come on as a spinner when you've kind of already got a few wickets. But, um, you know, I like the look of him. Lewis Gregory started well. He only bowled four overs, but went for 11. Uh, and Overton did his job as well. So yeah. I think... What you want is to develop this big kind of group of players uh, and England now in white ball cricket. If this had have happened in test cricket, Ellie, I think there'd been a big mm. problem, you know, because mm. I don't think the test team no. have got, you know, the, the kind of same kind of uh, yeah. golf in, in, in terms of depth. But the white ball team, I just think they've got that many players that they couldn't uh, call upon. Yeah. Well, Ben Stokes was captain, first time as captain for uh, the white ball team. He, he, he um, captained the test team last year, of course, uh, when uh, Joe Root was on paternity leave. But uh, this was his thought afterwards. You know, I think it shows great character in the group that we've got to be able to come in and put performance like that, considering what's gone on the last two, three days. You know, there's not really much any, well, there's no negativity to, to say about that game. It was, you know, from start to finish was brilliant. Um, having any opposition fall down early is obviously a massive help and it gets you well ahead of the game. Um, and then with the bat, just clinical, just didn't give them a sniff whatsoever. So, you know, very pleasing first game out, but we obviously didn't get put under any pressure today whatsoever. And um, we know that we will in this series at some point, but, you know, it's a great learning curve for the new guys, especially knowing that sticking to the basics for as long as we possibly can is always going to give you rewards. Of course, some impressive performances and one standout was Saqib Mahmood's four wickets. How important a, a performance was that for him? Yeah, I think massive, you know, um, a guy with Saki's talent and skill to sort of be in and out of squads and, you know, on the fringe of a team um, can be frustrating, but to see him put in performance like that, you know, two long spells, um, especially with coming off the back of just T20 cricket, will do him the world of good. Um, he bowled fast, very skillful bowler. Uh, coming away with Forfa, uh, I think we'll put him in great um, you know, frame of mind for the next two games. And finally, looking forward to Laws, you mentioned you weren't put under pressure, but are there going to be any areas to focus on or improvements that you want for Saturday? No, I think what we just need to do is build on that performance, but also know that we can't live off this performance. You know, cricket doesn't always go like that. But if we just, you know, keep sticking to our guns and, and doing what served this white ball team so well, even though it's different personnel, um, we know that genuinely we come out on top. 
Well, that was Ben Stokes speaking to Ebony Rainford Brent. How important was it for the team, Michael, that you had Ben Stokes standing there at the toss, leading the team, yeah. setting the example? Well, I, 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 he's such a, a mammoth character. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, at the start of the week, um, I think England were hoping that Ben can just be kept away from the England side for another few weeks to just get that finger right uh, before the Test Series against India. But, you know, he got the nod. It, it was in need. Um, you know, and those those players in the team, even though they're inexperienced, to, to think that they've got Ben Stokes leading them out there, uh, he's just colossal, isn't he, in everything that he does. Um, the way that he spoke yesterday, I thought he was very, very good. Uh, the messages that he, w he was sending, um, I believe he just told the players to, to go out and play the way that they have been doing for the counties. Uh, I think that's always the hardest thing to do in international cricket, to try and trust your game, to just go and play the way that you've been playing. Uh, and England picked players to, to fulfil certain roles and that's exactly what they did today. They just went out and delivered their roles for the team. Um, as a captain, he'll not have an easier day. It's an absolute stroll when you, you get in wickets <laughs> and the opposition don't get anywhere near a par and you, and you chase it down in 20, 21 overs. Uh, he, he would have had a, 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 an absolute glorious day just being out there because everything would have worked for him. Um, he'll know Pakistan will come back. And I think, you know, when you think about the Sri Lankan series there, Ellie, which was so one-sided, it was poor. It wasn't a great, you know, visual really for, for the cricketing uh, spectator, uh, even though England hammered Sri Lanka. You, you want to see competition. Uh, and I would expect Pakistan to, to, to come back and play, <laughs> I'd hope, a bit better than we saw today. And the series worried. needs it. We need some competition. Mike, um, you, you were talking about sending messages and what have you. Uh, do you think this England white ball group have sent a message to Alex Hales? Because I was surprised that he wasn't there. Oh, he's gone. He's gone, Phil. He's gone. Yeah, he's gone. He's, he's not playing again. If, he, if he's not getting a call up when... <laughs> No. The whole squad has been sent into isolation. <laughs> That's what I thought. Uh, and you, you, you're opening the batting with with Salt uh, from Sussex, a good strike. Yeah. Alex Hales. I mean, I, I'm disappointed in a way that, you know, they've not been able to uh, bring him back bring into the fold great. in some way. Um, I know there's been difficulty in, in, in having face-to-face -face meetings, but surely over Zoom or on, on the phone, I'm not too sure whether O Morgan's got it on, on the blower to Alex Hales and have a conversation. I'm not sh too sure if that's happened, but... You know, I, I do believe that people do deserve second chances. Um, you know, he, he, he made the ultimate uh, mistake before the World Cup. Uh, only his wrongdoing, he's only got himself to blame. But missing out on that World Cup, uh, going away, and, and, and I believe he's, he's you know, he, he's, he's been very good around the teams that he's played for. Uh, and his yeah. batting speaks for itself. So yeah. I am slightly disappointed that he didn't get the nod. Um, but I don't think we'll see him again. I just no. I, I can't see if he's not picked this week, Phil. When is he going to get no. picked in the future? No, I thought I might have got a call actually. Well, well yeah, you were close. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd have beaten Pakistan as well today, Phil. The way they played, you'd have had no problem. I could have opened a bat. <laughs> Should we hear from the player of the match today? It was Saki Mahmood with his uh, four wickets, and the question really was: Did he expect to play so well, given how late he was called up? You know, obviously I wanted to make the most of the opportunity, but to come in and obviously start as well as I did and, and take four wickets at the end, uh, I'd have taken that at the start of the day. He seemed to show a full range of skills, whether that was good pace and control, but also coming around the wicket to the left-handers. You seem to have a very organised game at the moment. Yeah, I, th I think it was just a case of one adapting to the wicket and uh, some of their players as well. We hadn't seen the left-hander and you know, we were trying to pick up as much as we could. Uh, bowling at him and fell around the wicket was probably the best option to try and get him out of OBW and luckily it paid off. And ambitions going forward, obviously this is a real opportunity to have a, a white ball series for England against Pakistan. Looking forward, are you looking to, to try and impress throughout the series? Yeah, absolutely. And look, you know, we're representing our country, we want to we wanna win the series as well. Um, obviously it's weird circumstances but uh, as, as an 11 and as a squad we want to go out there and showcase our skills and, and win this series as well. Well that was Saki Mahmood speaking to Ebony yeah. Rainford Brent, tough as yeah? Yeah, yeah I, I think sometimes it's, it, it works in your favour when you don't quite know what's going on, you know, and you get the late call up and you just grab your bags and sort of potter down there and I'm here and you get into it. You don't have that sort of time to think about how the game's going to go and all the family phoning you up and everything and good luck for a couple of weeks' time or something like that. Sometimes you just go there, you put your skills into practice and, and, and it can help in a funny sort of way. You know what, Phil, it's also a reminder, I reckon, to, to, to you know, there's, there's so much... Um, 
kind of preparation goes into playing these days and there's so yeah. much goes into performing and, and there's so much in terms of analyzing what's going to happen you get there a few days early and you know you do everything <laughs> proper and then suddenly you, 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 you you've almost overthought performing and you can't mm. perform uh, a little bit of the old school arrive the night before say hello to your teammates get on with it the next day and perform like yeah. that it's it's a little bit of a reminder that it doesn't always have to be ultimately professional uh, to put in a performance yeah. Just, just thinking about the, the the kind of the first selections, if you like, for for England's fifty over team. So you know you've got you've got Wood, you've got Wokes, you've got Willie, um, you know you've got um, who are Archer, obviously when he's yeah. available <laughs> to come back in. Where would you have Saqib in that group, Tuffers? Where where does he fit in? Should they find room for him? Well, I think he's next off the rank. You know, he has really stuck his hand up there and said, if anyone gets injured, if anyone has a has a loss of form or anything happens to him, and everything, I'm your go-to guy. And that's all you can do. All you can do, you know, because I think some of these guys, you know, they look at that England white ball side and they think to themselves, how am I going to get in that side? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you, you sometimes have a a generation of a team that you you just think, you know, you're just bubbling under and there's no way in it. But what he's done is he's stuck his hand up. Is that if anyone loses form anyone gets injured do not think about anyone else it's me and so that's all you can do same with the I, I think that's what this series is about ellie it, it, it's about the players realizing that they'll yeah. they'll be realistic and honest with themselves if england's full team is available it's only ben stokes gets in it you know if everyone is available uh, for the series later on in, in in the year a lot of these players won't be anywhere near um, yeah. But what you have to make sure that in this series over the next few games is make sure that if Joffre's not fit, Chris Wokes goes down with an injury. Um, you know, Adil Rashid has a, a, a period where, you know, Adil's had some injuries in the past, but of late he hasn't picked up many. But if he did, Matt Parkinson's got to be making sure that he is the next spinner for England. Yeah. Um, you know, Lewis Gregory, he wants to make sure that he's the next Chris Wokes in this one day team. Uh, so all these players will be thinking. Um, you know, short term about this series of performing, but also long term, making sure that they are that next cab of the rank. Zach Crawley at number three, or Milan opening the batting. You know, Bairstow and Roy will open, but if one of those two yeah. drops out, can Milan be that replacement opener? So it's a great chance for these players to be that uh, that, that, that that next next player that they turn to. That's all they can do. I tell you who's got the biggest smile on his face after all this today, and that is Chris Silverwood. Chris Silverwood mm. will be sitting there going, "What a." squad or, mm. or however many what what a group of 50 players probably or 40 players i've got to pick from you know he'll be sitting back very content with that the way things are going uh, and i wonder how much confidence zach crawley's innings will have given him with you know because because last time we saw him in, playing for england in in, a, in the test matches he looked a diminished figure didn't he but he, he looked on it again today yeah, I, I thought it was a really important innings for, for zach crawley uh, on the back of that new zealand series on the back of um not playing so well in India, uh, to get your next outing for England and it to be in a different format, it's actually quite nice. It's it's almost fallen into place with Zach Crawley, um, that he was able to go out there and face a white ball, England under no pressure and just bat, just bat, get a red inker. He's done that, 58 not out. Um, you know, we'll have to wait and see what they're going to do with the Test Match team. But I, I would sit, think that Zach Crawley will just keep his place, but he'll know that that first test match at uh, Trent Bridge against India is going to be massive, absolutely mm. massive. So I think today was a reminder to everyone that he, he can seriously play. He's a good, he's a good batter. Uh, he's one that I do. You have to have concerns about players when they have so many low scores and make so many errors. But if, if one of the younger players, I, I still believe he's going to have a, a long test match career. Mm. I just think he's got the game to be able to just have that period where he becomes very consistent. England absolutely hammered Pakistan in the first ODI in Cardiff. They play at Lords next and then at Edgbaston and then there's the T20s after that. And let's not forget the context is that these are all adding to qualification for the next Cricket World Cup. So not a great look for Pakistan. But, but bearing in mind as well the state that England were in on Tuesday morning when we got the news through that uh, a COVID outbreak in the squad saw three players, four backroom staff, test positive. It meant that the rest of England's party had to self-isolate as a result. They were all sent home. England Director of Cricket Ashley Giles said he was confident that no one associated with the squad had breached any protocols. I guess we're, we're sort of living, you know, at a different rate to society. We're, we're almost misaligned to how... Um, 
you know, at odds to how society is operating. And that, that is particularly difficult when we know that one case can shut you down, let alone seven. So it's something we're constantly juggling with. And we're certainly juggling with the amount of time our players have spent in these environments. Um, we have extremely busy schedules and we've been doing this now for 14 or 15 months. Um, and so to expect, I think to expect them to adhere to the sense that they go to the ground, they stay away from each other, they go back to the hotel, they put their mask on and go straight back to their room, they eat on their own, etc., is almost impossible for that period of time without losing people. So if relaxing is allowing those guys to, to eat together or spend some time together, and we know, I guess, they spend a lot of time in the dressing room together where that infection could happen. So it's almost impossible to completely, um, you know, remove that risk, I think, from the environment. Well, that was Ashley Giles, who was talking to Jonathan Agnew a couple of days ago after we found out about this. I mean, Michael, your take on this, you, you described this as an overreaction on Twitter. Yeah, I do, yeah. Earlier in uh, the week. I honestly think that. I, I just think it's all becoming very confusing. Um, and I'll go back to the Euro Championship with Billy Gilmore. Uh, and the, the Scottish player was tested yeah. positive and that not one Scotland footballer or management had to isolate. Yet two England footballers had to. I, I just find it all very confusing. I I just think sport is in a, you know, particularly cricket. Um, you know, cricket doesn't have the, 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 the volumes of cash that football has. So, you know, the ECB, Ashley Giles, Tom Harrison, they have to be so careful because... You know, if this happens in two weeks' time, it wipes out the 100 or it wipes out the, the test series against India. Um, you're talking of £100 million in terms of a broadcast deal. So I get it from a, a, an ECB perspective, but I just think, you know, something soon has to change. Um, young, fit sports people, uh, I, 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 again, I, I'll get abused for this because I, I'm, I'm not a scientist and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a doctor, but, you know, are they really at, at risk in amongst themselves mm. you know isn't it like you know, are, are you fit to play are you okay if, if someone is is tested positive of course but couldn't they have pcr tested the rest of the team that weren't positive to try mm. and make sure that they were playing a little bit sooner than sending them back home for 10 days of isolation once again i just think it's asking human beings to just act in a fashion that's just not right well, I, I mean, we should say, shouldn't we? I mean, the ECB say that they were acting on medical advice. So they consulted doctors. Of course, they were. They had a legal requirement, they say, to protect players and possible close contacts. And so also they've got to protect the opponents as well, haven't they? They've got to pr protect the Pakistan team. And you think about what happened and people have raised this yeah. during the week as yeah. well. And you yeah. know, Rami's Raja making the point that, you know, the, the, the contrast between the way that England flew back from South Africa yeah. as soon as they the thought that the bubble had been breached during that tour in comparison to the fact that the Pakistan team, you know, and the PCB say, no, we're, we're fine, we're happy that it's a secure environment, but there is this this need, this absolute need to say, we've got to make this secure for, for everybody. And, you know, for, for some players are going to be vaccinated, other players are not going to be vaccinated. And I suppose that's the difference, isn't it? You know, back in in the the winter when England were in South Africa, there were no vaccinations. No. There is a little bit more safety now. But it's, I mean, I mean, thank goodness we're not making these decisions, Atoffers, because it's, an, it's yeah. a nightmare. Well, yes, I think that the vaccinations are key and things have moved on a little bit, isn't it? But I think you're right. I mean, surely the, uh, the Pakistan cricket team must have been consulted about this. And I think if they would have stuck their hands up like England did in South Africa and said, well, no, we feel at risk, they would have been well within their rights to go home, I think, and, and, and pull out of the tour. So I'm not sure quite what the protocols are or how it all went about, but I'm sure that they would have been consulted, wouldn't they, Mike? Like? But yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, but let, let, let's be honest. July the nineteenth, the, the floodgates are open. You know, so we're, we're all out there. We're all being able to be normal, and yeah. you know, last not year when cr cricketers though no, but they, they they can't be out of not normal places, Ellie, because last year we, we had two grounds. We had the Aegeus Bowl where we were completely locked up. Manchester Old Trafford completely locked up. No one could get in. You know, throughout the hundred in the Test series, that's not going to be the case. They are going to be staying in hotels with yeah. other people. You know, they will, 
try and, uh, and open up a, a way, I'm sure, of players being able to get out and do things and, and try and have as normal a life as they possibly can. But, you know, I don't think they're going to be able to. You know, so that's going to put a strain on, on the team once again, which I, I just feel so sorry for the players that they're going to have to go through that once more. But I just don't see how it's going to be possible not, not to... You know, the, the virus is out there and it's going to be out there even more so. Um, I, I fear that we might be going through this again in a few weeks' time. And that's why I, I'm, I'm quite strong in the fact that, you know, young, fit sports people, isn't, isn't it now time that, yes, get them vaccinated as quickly as possible, isn't it time to, to say they are young, fit sports people and just get on with, with, with doing their jobs unless they get to a stage where they just physically can't do their jobs? But then, you know, the question of, of PCR testing, and you, and you mentioned that, and obviously we, we spent the whole of last summer being tested constantly, but, but there always has to be that delay, you know, that, that you, you can't be certain that, that you haven't got, you're not incubating the disease, and the disease can have a different effect on, on different people. And, you know, and you might have somebody, I mean, you know, think about somebody like Jack Leach, for example, who mm. was told that he was clinically vulnerable because of, of the various conditions that he has. So, so, so you know, young, fit sports people is one thing, but not everybody is the same, as, as we know in it. But again, and long, you're and talking, long about, the is a, is Ellie, you're talking concern, about the vulnerable there. That, that, that's, look, it, it's just getting to, to a stage where, if we carry on as it is, and as I say, July the 19th, the floodgates will open, we are going to be in this situation in three weeks' time. There's no way that there's not going to be a case. How is there not going to be a case inside of cricket? Because the bubble isn't there anymore. We're not at the EGS Bowl. We're not at Old Trafford. They're out and about. How's it got in this time? Because they've had to stay in hotels that other people are in. They're in lifts. They'll say they've got their own lifts, but they're still going to go through the doors of the hotel mm. where other people have gone through. Um, so unless something changes in terms of the way they are dealing with all this, I fear that we're going to have this again in a few weeks. I can't see how it's not going to suddenly be drawn up once again and a few players are going to be positive. I just can't see how that's going to be possible. Mm. I find it hard enough to log in on the app, you know. I mean, it is a very confusing... <laughs> But I mean, again, the, you know, the other point to, to make as well is that, you know, the scale of the outbreak, when you've got seven people and you've got yeah. four backroom staff and, you know, who are, I mean, you know, they're, they're, they are different ages, aren't they? They're not all, if, if you're going to have yeah. the range of backroom staff that they have, then they're not all young and fit, as, as you no. say, Michael. But, uh, absolutely. But Ellie, if, if things don't change in terms of the way that this is dealt with, we're, we're in this for a long, long time. And sport so how, and so cricket how, in particular is going to get hit yeah. so much. You know, it Dressing can't room. afford, cricket cannot afford for that series against India to be thrown out. It can't afford it. The ECB uh, have got down, I think, 2.2 million in reserves. They can't afford to, to miss a series. They can't afford for that 100 not to have the complete um, tournament take place. If one yeah. of the 100 teams gets white, how, how can you replace mm. a 100 team? You can't. No. It's impossible. And I just so can't can... see how they're going to be able to go over the next six to eight weeks with the whole of the UK uh, opening up on the 19th without a case or two. Yeah. Do you think it will, they'll close it down then, Mike, if something like that then does break out, which you're saying... Well, they have to. They've will. done it this time. Yeah. So the, 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 you know, the precedent is now set that as soon as a case comes into a team, they're going to have to kind of st stop the whole team because they've yeah. set that precedent with this England team. Well, I think, I, back, but back I kind of think, life. I kind of think that they will make, they will make, in, well, maybe that's, the, maybe that's the answer because I, I, it yeah. feels to me as if they will make decisions based on individual circumstances and the circumstances were very specifically, you know, the, the seven cases and who knows who brought, where it came from, but, but maybe, maybe it is, bubble, maybe it's back to bubbles as, again, as you but say. How, but Ellie, how can they have a bubble? When they're not at those two, well, grounds. at different test, at test matches. That's the thing. I mean, maybe, maybe, you know, kind of taking it, taking it into one hotel, bussing people in and out, <clears throat> and you know, and you, you can't, as you say, the two grounds. I think Old logistically, and, and Ellie, that's almost impossible now to to create a, a whole hotel just for an England team, or for a mm. hundred group of teams. I, I just don't know if those hotels are available. I think everything's been booked. You know, so I do think it's going to be very, very tricky for cricket over the next few weeks with this precedent that's been set this week. Um, and, and July the 19th, I keep saying it, but the whole mm. country is opened up. I can't see how cases are going to go down. They're only going to go up. 
and, and I'm, I'm worried that in, the, in a few weeks' time we're going to be in the same situation and cricket is going to be so vulnerable with its finances. It, it, mm. can't, it can't afford to, to have the 100 cancelled or a, a test or two against India. It just can't afford to, to have that cancellation. Right. Well, we haven't got the answers, as, as is no, clearly no, we haven't. Uh, no. the case. No, we never do. But anyway, <laughs> look, look, one thing we do have the answer to is is the brilliant genius of, of James Anderson. Um, we've got to pay tribute to Jimmy yet again. He took his 1,000th first-class wicket. He helped Lancashire skittle Kent for 74 inside a session at Old Trafford. The match ended up in a draw yesterday. Uh, Jimmy finished with... Seven for 19, his best figures at Old Trafford. And he gave this reaction afterwards to Scott Reid. It feels great, actually. Um, I'm getting ribbed from the lads upstairs because I, I genuinely didn't know what, um, what I was on or how many wickets I'd taken. So I thought at first they were going a bit over the top for a five-wicket celebration. <laughs> but yeah, to, to see the sort of... I don't know, just the reaction from the, the lads, I think, was, was really special. And to, to just... Have it, chew the fat with them in there after the after the game as well, or well, after the day's play. Sorry, it's just really special, really nice, and I think to it, it feels nice to get the milestone here as well, where I've taken my first first class wicket um, to take my thousandth here. Just still seems you know it sounds ridiculous that I've taken a thousand wickets, but to do it here was extra special. So you didn't know? Um, no, I, I knew I was in the 90s, but I didn't know right. exactly what I was on. Um, I only knew that because of you know. I've seen it on social media or whatever for the last um, for, for, during the summer um, but I came here and I, all I was thinking about today was um, I've done loads of work in the nets I'm, I'm try, you know just grooving my action and working on some stuff and I, that's all I wanted to do today was trying to make that make sure that sort of that I bowled well and got into that rhythm that I was working on uh, in the nets and that and luckily today it came off I'm doing it from your own end yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't really thought of that, that I hadn't registered, um, but yeah, <laughs> incredible, <laughs> just, uh, yeah, a day that I'll, I'll never forget, definitely. Do you think it's likely to happen again? I don't know, who knows, I think it's becoming more and more difficult because of the, the amount of first class cricket that's played across the world, and yeah, I think it's less and less likely, the fact that I'm the first person to, to pass the milestone in 15 years, I think it is, since Andy Caddick did it. You know, I think that makes it, you know, it could potentially be the last person to, again, just adds to the, the feeling of it being very, very special. James Anderson, 39 at the end of this month. Yeah. Taking still seven for nineteen. For yeah, I know, still selling out <laughs> CBs. I think that's what will it, it, um, delight him more, that he, he, you still have that drive and that pleasure you know, because usually you're always looking to sort of beat your career best and what have you, and and, and then just to turn out seven for 19 at, after all those years in the nets, as he was saying, and grooving his action and working on things, you know, uh, the, the sky is the limit, obviously. I mean, you know, it, it was amazing. I mean, listen, I've, I've got a thousand wickets, but he's got a few more test wickets than me, and it does take, a, it, it takes quite a lot of effort, that does, and especially for a seam bowler, you know, that is um, a, a hell of a, hell of a mark. Stone. There's, uh, and, Phil, uh, I don't know if you've seen amazing. it. There's, um, there's, uh, I think it's about six minutes and forty three seconds of the whole of his spell, uh, yes. doing the rounds on on social media. Yeah. Any, any young bowler that's listening and wants to mm. just to, just have a masterclass on how to bowl, mm. seam, swing, consistent, yeah. eighty yeah. odd miles an hour, uh, absolute diamond mm -hmm. of a spell. Um, just watch that. It, it, it's honestly, it's a joy. I mean, I, I generally don't watch that much cricket when I'm at home uh, you know away from what we do I, I, but I had to I, I kind of started watching this spell of Jimmy Anderson and I was like oh my, this is just genius yeah. in and out yeah. swing perfect length going wider of the crease making the batter play then coming a bit close to the stumps uh, brilliant and again it's a lesson that you know that there's someone that's nearing a thousand first class wickets yet in the series against New Zealand he wasn't quite right you know, it was during the one day series where he was working for us and, and, and you know, England were playing football and what was he doing at Durham? He was bowling yeah. in the middle with the coach, just trying to yeah. groove something. I've seen him at Old Trafford bowling at the Cone uh, with Glenn Chapel, the, the Lancashire coach. He clearly didn't feel right against New Zealand. He just didn't feel right in his rhythm and his action. He's gone away and he's worked in it. And it, it's great to hear someone like Jimmy Anderson, the greatest uh, that we've produced, in my opinion, still having to groove, still having to groove his action yeah. and get it right and then go out into the middle and, and, and just 
think to himself, right, just do what I've done in practice and see how it works. And it worked in a fashion of getting seven for 19, perfect. Yeah, and, that, and that's one thing that it, it does come across that is, is uh, um, he never takes his foot off the gas. You know, even, you know, I mean, you know, when you, when, when you get a little bit older in your career, you sort of like, you might have an afternoon off or, you know, you might just have half an hour in the nets. Obviously not. He just keeps grooving it, keeps doing it, keeps wanting to get better. Um, yeah, amazing, amazing performance. Good luck. Can he get Did better? It his own end. Can he get Did better? Did it at his own end? Can huh? he get better? Well, I don't know. Can he? I, I mean, I, I don't know how you can get better. I think, I think what he can do is just make sure he, he, he gets that kind of zip that he missed against yeah. New Zealand. He just seems to, you know, when he just kisses off the surface when Jimmy's bowling yeah. at his best, he kind of hits the bat, batsman a little bit harder than you're expecting. Uh, against New Zealand, he didn't have that kind of zip off the surface. Uh, he yeah. found it against Ken. Unfortunately, I, I reckon Zach Corley, when he got his England call up this week, he thought, oh, delighted. Oh, I don't have to face Jimmy in the second innings. Thank no, you very much. Because he was on much. a pair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, gone. I think that he's just forever looking. I think, I think, really, at that stage of your career, you're just looking for that ultimate consistency, aren't you? Because you know he's not going to get any quicker. He knows how to bowl the in swing of this one. Okay, you can fiddle about with a few new deliveries and perhaps a slower ball and things like that and what have you. But I think it's just as you were saying, getting that uh, form. You're forever trying to, you know, find that level of, of consistency. And that's what I think he, he, he's after now. And that is just mm. performing at the highest level nine times out of ten. Let's talk about another achievement in a very different kind of way, another sort of sporting milestone. Uh, Hashi Mamla secured Surrey a draw against Hampshire yesterday. He made 37 not out of 278 balls. Wow. So he came out to bat at the start of the final day after Rory Burns was dismissed off the last ball the previous evening. Love Surrey that. for six for two at the time. They finished 122 for eight. 381 minutes at the crease. Um, Michael, how do you assess that as a batting love, performance? Love a good grind. It's, love it's a bonk, good grind. He's bonkers, isn't it? Is it to be doing that? I mean, what's he? that's unbelievable. I mean, he's always had that. 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 I mean, I remember him getting a triple century at the Oval yeah. against England. He just that's he, right. when he gets in, and and that's what I've always admired uh, Hashi Mamla because I think he he played against uh, me when he was making his. Uh, debut for South Africa and, and he just couldn't play he just felt that you were going to yeah. snick him off and him off, you yeah. know you had about four gullies and you bowled into that channel bowled him a couple of bounces pushed him back and then he'd throw his hands and you'd get him caught in that cordon um, the way that he went from that that poorish start to suddenly becoming one of the best players in the world inside three or four years you know shows you how strong his mentality is and he's always had that ability to just you know, make batting for long. It's like Alistair Cook. They, they can bat for hours and hours and, it, and they make it look so easy. You know, batting for a long period of time is hard. You know, the concentration, uh, the, the mental toughness that you have to show to just repeat everything, ball after ball. Um, and he's just cool. He's just, a, you know, very, very cool, calm, um, just gets into his groove, gets into his kind of kind of zone of how he wants to play, reads the situation. So yesterday morning, he would have just thought, runs are not even on my radar. This is no. all about a day of batting balls, not runs, just bat for balls. And he managed to get what, 278 of them. Magnificent. Yeah. Great. No, and also, of course, you know, that's technique as well, Mike, yep. isn't it? You know, you, yep. you can't do that without a defensive technique. And perhaps, you know, we've been going on about England's sort of batting line, not, not having that uh, sort of, as you say, mindset, but also technique to survive that amount There's of time. There's not many other around order at the minute, get is one, there's not many around, is there? You generally, no, no. It, we watch Test match cricket and you feel no. that if there's a quality seamer bowling the top of off stump for yeah. two or three overs, going to get a wicket. There's yeah. not many players in this in this generation that can play high class forward defence. Hashi yeah. Mamla has got the most beautiful forward defence. Yeah. What, 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 what if you're a, what if you're that Hampshire bowling attack? Tough as you've got them six for two at the start of the day, <laughs> and they're 122 for eight at the end. Listen, I've been there many times, Ellie. I've been there many times, and you you almost then just start pulling your hair out. You know, you Danny just Morrison going, did for oh. you, Phil, didn't he? Sorry. Danny Morrison Who? do for you one year? Oh, that, we couldn't get him out for about two and a half hours. Yeah. Oh, my God. Thanks for bringing that one up, Mike. I'm going to start shaking already. <laughs> Gary Kirsten and, and Durban, Phil. Oh, oh Mike, stop. <laughs> Gary Kirsten, 275. And then Butch came on and got him bowled around his legs. <laughs> God. Oh, amazing. Amazing stuff. Um, right. 
Let's talk about uh, the, the other series that's starting tomorrow. It's the multi-format women's series between England and India. It resumes and it's the first T20 tomorrow. England currently leads 6-4 after playing one test and three one-dayers. Uh, so this is the, the points that you get in the multi-format series. So they drew the test match and then England won two of the ODIs to India's one. And we'll have live commentary on Sports Extra from 6.15 and Izzy Westbury will be part of the team in Northampton. Evening. Good evening. Hello. Just remind us who you got in the sweep, by the way. <laughs> North Macedonia, <laughs> wouldn't it? My, uh, my, my North Macedonia boys didn't quite didn't quite <laughs> manage to get through to the knockout stages. They didn't even manage to get the the most number of you know penalties against them or cards against them. That's what I was banking on. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh. heaviest defeat. There were all sorts of ways that Andy Zaltzman made it so to keep it more interesting. But look, let's talk about this this T Twenty um, this series of T Twenty games. And and actually, do you feel there's a little bit of momentum shifting? Um, towards India after that amazing um, final ODI, um, Mitali Raj and uh, you know <laughs> pulling it off against England and the frustration that England uh, felt in, in that game. Yeah, it's funny I think because going into this series as a whole, I think a lot of the focus was on the lack of preparation that India had. had. It was well documented that they played almost no cricket for a year and they've had problems with COVID and getting over here in the first place, all the quarantining they've had to do and some poor results. Um, and England was certainly the stronger in the test, even though it ended up in a draw and then came out, obviously, after the first two ODIs as, as real, um, well, obvious winners. And then we got to the third ODI and it was a disappointment. It was the first time that England got to bat first. We've got an explosive team. We were all thinking, right, this is their chance to show scores of 300 or something and it sort of petered out into um you know 220 or 47 overs a rain reduced match but suddenly because it's a, a multi-format series they're only six four up and we're going into the t20 part of it which obviously is a bit more volatile a bit more unpredictable and this is where some of the the young guns that we're so excited about for india could could really come off and and they've been in England now for a month and a bit. They're ready. They're up, up, up out. And I think, um, yeah, maybe, maybe the pressure has just shifted a little bit onto England. It's good. Then. Michael, are you a fan of the multi-format series? Yeah, I, 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 I do find it, um, you know, there's a little bit that really likes it and there's a little bit that I don't. You know, I like all the different formats kind of standing alone and, you know that makes any kind of sense. So I, I like the fact that it's six four. I like the fact that there's that there's plenty to play for in, in the T Twenty series. But um, I'm a bit of a, a the problem with the, the the girls game and and you know they don't play enough women's, tests. Women's game. Women's game. Well, women's game. Is... Well, they don't play enough <laughs> test matches. Uh, and for me, I, I'd like to see them play a, a, a lot more test match cricket. I really enjoyed watching. Mm. Uh, the game in Bristol. Um, I know yeah. there was a bit of controversy at the start mm -hmm. about the pitch and it was a used one. I, I didn't like that either. Uh, there should have been a fresh pitch, but it played okay in the end. Um, you know, but I'd like to see more test match cricket. But arguably, this is the way that women as test match cricket has sort of survived in a way over the last 10 years when the ICC was really trying to grow the game through T20 cricket and it was only through sort of saying well hang on a minute we still want to have some tests and at least with England and Australia and the Ashes that's kind of how that that survived over the last 10 years and now we're starting to see a few more tests pop up, a few more different bilateral series with test matches beyond the Ashes. So we've got this India one. India are going to Australia. They'll play a day-night test match there. I think it's been announced that England will play one in South Africa as well next year. So I feel as though, yeah, I agree with Michael absolutely that you kind of want to move towards, you know, test, full, fully-fledged test series. Don't get me wrong. But this at the moment is in this sort of hybrid development stage and it's a way of ensuring that that, that test match cricket, that pinnacle, still survives in the women's game. A quick word about the 100, Izzy, because that mm. gets underway uh, on the 21st of July and uh, it begins with the women's match as well. So it's the Oval Invincibles against Manchester Originals uh, live on BBC Two as well as on Test Match Special, of course, at 6.30. Do, do you think that, that this is going to be a big, as big a thing for the women's game that people are saying that it will be the 100? It it can be. I think one the biggest thing is the fact that it's it's being marketed and sort of everything that we see is men's and women's. Everything is the same. We talk about signings, announcements, players, all the talk is around men and women. And that's been really good from the ECB. I think 
the the difficulty is is that with the hundred we in in English domestic cricket there's no longer that sort of elite domestic T20 format now we don't know whether the 100 might be the same kind of preparation for a say a t20 world cup as a t20 domestic tournament it might make no difference whatsoever whether they're playing 100 ball cricket or t20 cricket but it does leave a few questions as to the the sort of state of the women's domestic game and that preparation for the international game but we're we're leaping into the unknown and well Mm. it's exciting isn't it